Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Good morning, children. Oh, oh, sick Cappy here. And my voice is slowly coming back. But we're gonna ruin it immediately because apparently at Asshole Consulting, the work never ends. Except I die, but then I pass it on. To somebody. I know who I'm passing it on to. This is from Jared. Jared writes, Hi Cappy, a while back you did a reaction video on some welfare kings and queens video. A, respond, a reaction video on some welfare kings and queens video. I would like for you to do a video reaction watching this eight minute video by Paul, Paul Joseph Watson. Unlike the previous one, I think you'll enjoy this one and the many levels of schadenfreude it will provide. Literally leftist millennials and I assume soon Gen Zers as well in San Francisco. Yeah! There really is no difference between Millennials and Gen Z. I mean, there's a the sociologist or whatever they say. Well, this date, I think it's 82 or 83. No, I'm sorry. That's the other direction. Was it 96, 97? After that, then then I guess you're a Gen Zer. But there's no sociolog like, oh, this happened and then the birthing changed. And, and so now the Gen Zers are different in this regard. It's just an extension of Millennials as the eldest Gen Zers are proving to be just as royal pain in the ass as in college. Uh, as well in San Francisco are paying upwards of 1200 a month to get this live in a prison cell. Yep, that's right, it's called pod sharing. And for that egregious monthly sum, they get a bunk bed and a quarter shared. Well, they did this in Japan, didn't they? I remember this is even in the late 80s. Except Japan got out of its financial problems and, and turned into the second largest economy in the world, actually, by the way. That was patriarchy. Um, we just said get a bunk and a quarter. Shared with others, including having to share bathrooms and showers. Just when I think enjoy the decline, couldn't get any better. I run into many gold strikes like this video to sweeten the decline. Um, I'm not necessarily against it because if you are a programmer, you're a young man, young woman, and you're you're making bank. Um, Taxes in California go take half, at least half, right off the bat half. and But you still bring in some decent uh, home pay in. And so if you can make your gold there and then go move back to Texas or whatever with a chunk of change. Um, living, I mean, it, it sucks. I mean, you want to see something, look at man camps. I visited a man camp in North, uh, North Carolina, North Dakota by Williston um, when that Bakken oil boom was going. And that's what a lot of those guys did. Um, the problem is, I think you're right, um, the millennials and Gen Zers, oh hell, the baby boomers too, and like, there's so much culture and they have restaurants. Uh, they stay there and they slowly lose their money. Well, not so slowly, they lose the money rather quickly to rent, uh, to taxes, and the other big suck is rent. Uh, just why I think a joke the client couldn't give any better or any mini gold lines in the deal. Uh, but more importantly, these are millennial men and women who will not get to procreate living in those conditions. And those are leftists that will not spun off screen. Leftists are not made in the womb. They're made in school. That's where leftists are made. There will always be leftists. Teachers will brainwash them to hate you, hate America, hate freedom, and want everybody else's money. I don't care what millennial women say. There's no way in hell they'd go for a week. <laughs> Beta male, a, a weak beta male living in a prison cell with other weak betas, no way. No amount of leftist indoctrination would change that. Yeah, they're going after Mr. I, who do you go after? Who are the hot, sought after men in the likes of San Francisco and Seattle and Portland? That's very interesting because when I think Seattle, I don't see Mr. Big. I, I see like. Uh, Who's in charge of Apple? I, I see a, a svelte, effeminate looking Steve Jobs. That's what I see. I don't see like a rich, you know, powerful, uh, physically powerful uh, investment banking type. <coughs> Furthermore, I think with the right kind of marketing, someone could start selling their own, start their own business selling prison food to these same kids. I'm sure if branded appropriately by slapping the words organic, artisanal, and ethnically sourced, to their own brand of disciplinary loafs, these same idiots would buy it. I would love to see your action and commentary to this piece. All right, well, let's go ahead 
Oh, I gotta play it. Urban millennials and Zoomers really have a fantastic future to look forward to. Just let's stop here. If I had his accent, don't you think I'd be like super famous and awesomely successful like Paul Joseph Watson? I think so too. It's British voice privilege. Embroiled in mountains of student debt. No savings and no inheritance because their boomer parents have blown it all on luxury cruisers, living atomized, transient, lonely lives in decaying dystopian megacities. Oh, no. That is interesting. Um, there was an article, and I have it in the book I have coming right up, uh, How Not to Become a Millennial. <coughs> millennial, well, young people in general historically have lived in urban centers, and the percentage of them that don't have friends is like 27% or some, some shockingly high. You don't have a friend? But you live in where all the people are. How do, and you're young. I don't have friends because my friends suck. They got old, they get tired, they get weak, they get kids, they get wives, they get divorced, they get destroyed. I, so I understand why. Millennials? You guys in your 20s and your early 30s, what the hell, man? Especially in your 30s, you should have a little bit of money to go play. Able to afford any kind of standard of living that provides them with basic dignity or privacy, eating eco-friendly rations of insects, forced to live like ants in colonies. Meet the pod people. Pod share is affordable shared housing that we build across Los Angeles and here in San Francisco is our first site. Okay. I Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, this is the... Uh, here's Elvina Beck. <laughs> She's the CEO of Podshare. She's a young looking woman. She's in shape. Um, which doesn't have anything to do with it really, but I gotta tip my hat to her. Uh, she's she's a capitalist. She's making money. Uh, there's a need for cheap housing and she's she's offered it. So I hope she makes off like a bandit. And I think she will because uh, you gotta live somewhere. And you gotta live where the action is, right? Right kids, you gotta be where the action is. And the culture is in California, right? It, the socialist utopia of? Because of the restaurants, and the parks, and the people, and the people watching. You gotta be there, right? Because there's no culture whatsoever in like Raleigh, or Macon, or uh, what was Charleston? Charleston? Uh, there are these two southern towns, um, the Carolinas and Georgia. Um, Charleston? Oh, what was the other one? Savannah, Savannah, Georgia. You can't possibly go to New Orleans. You can't go there, right? There's no culture there. You gotta be where it's popular, where you're brainwashed to go. Los Angeles is San Francisco. All right. The idea it's membership based housing. So if you book a pod, you can stay across the whole network of locations. <clears throat> That's good. That's good too. That's like my gym membership. It's all across the country, and I could I could stop at any one. It's like a timeshare. I don't. This is not bad at all. <laughs> Great, $1,200 a month to live in a pod in the middle of San Francisco. A shithole where the streets are littered with used needles, mountains of trash, and piles of oozing feces. Where thanks to chronic homelessness and an exploding rat population, medieval diseases are making a comeback. So trendy. My whole concept was like the idea of the government giving you everything in a... Okay. <laughs> I've seen this before. Um... So we see our first tenant now in the in the thing, and it's this tall, he's got his beard, and he's this effeminate. I'm a skinny guy, and I haven't worked out for a while, uh, in part because of sickness and all that. But this guy's wrists are skinnier than mine. I mean, here you have your epitomal millennial, and he's cooking, he's very gingerly. I mean, his hands are dainty, they're very dainty. I at least changed oil while I was sick. Not a lot of man points on that one, but I, I, did, I did do something manly. <coughs> um, but I have seen this. I visited my buddy in Tucson, and uh, it was an Airbnb, and the guy was renting rooms. And there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing wrong with renting rooms. I'm, I'm okay with this. Uh, and this young lady's entrepreneurial venture. Uh, but it was so depressing. I was the, me and my buddy that I was crashing with, we were the only Gen Xers there. Everybody else was a millennial. And these, they were all, uh, but what, national park people, rangers, workers, like, and they were off season. And here they are in Tucson where it's warm, and I think it was winter. And there's great hiking in Tucson, by the way, great hiking in all of Arizona. And I've never seen such a group of more depressed, unhappy people. 
and really cold women. Like the boys were, they were total beta. They they weren't physically weak. Though. That's one thing I have to remember. Like these guys are in shape. You know, to be a ranger, you gotta be in somewhat good shape. And they were, but they were just so effeminate. They just let the women run all over them. And I'm like, yeah, I'd be sad and depressed too if my gal was bitching at me every five minutes. And then if I was a woman, I'd be pissed off too that when I test my boyfriend, he doesn't stand up to me. I'd be pissed off too. So everybody was pissed off. And I, for once, I was the happy guy. I was like, oh, what do you guys want to go? I, there's Sabino Canyon. There's, there's, there's Toto Canyon. We could go, what are you guys doing? Are you, we're just going to lie around here all day. And they did. That's what they did. And that's, that's why they were making their organic, they were making their food, they were making it organic, you smell of, not kombucha, patchouli, oh yes, oh yes. So I could see that, this is what we can make fun of, how basically mass produced uh, the millennials are. <laughs> communist state. What if you could subscribe to a housing membership and have all your needs met? All my needs met? Transcendent purpose, Wait, family, did she just say children, communist government state? giving you everything in a com So trendy. My whole concept was like the idea of the government giving you everything in a communist state. What if you could subscribe to a housing membership? Well, you don't pay for it where the government gives it to you in a communist state. It, it, you know what? Here, here's what. She could just be savvy. Saying, look, bros, I'm with you. I'm a communist. She's not a communist. Because she's charging these people for it. Okay. And everything will be in my... <laughs> and have all your needs met. All my needs met. Transcendent purpose. Family. Children. Authentic life-affirming happiness. Culture model is really for myself, which is solo, single, no children, no pets. You know, like, I'm really just building something I want to live in. Oh, how about the basic human right to privacy? This location has two bathrooms. And this one's currently being used. The hardest thing about living in a place like this is that you give up your privacy. Okay. I understand temporary. I understand. But if you look at the tenant here, he's. it looks like he's a teenager really living at home. As you should as you know, a young teenager, 13, 14, you know, because he's at a bunk bed. Guys, I, I understand the expensiveness of San Francisco. I understand, you know, if you're making money. Okay, I understand if you're near the Apple campus or uh, Silicon Valley. But if you're doing it because if, if you're working as a barista or a waiter or a waitress, again, nothing wrong with that, perfectly fine. But you're living in San Francisco and this is what you got to do. You're stuck there. This is going to be your life forever. It, this should be a temporary thing before you move on to bigger and better things. And if you're living in these major cities as a young person, leftist or not, I'm just gonna give you financial advice. You better be making well over six figs. Six figs just gets you by out in that, those towns. Uh, you better be banking money to go move back home or somewhere else where you can build a house a lot cheaper. Because if you're not, you're merely treading water. You're not making any progress. So I hope to God you, I mean, now I can understand these millennials back in Tucson. They, they were just, well, they weren't having fun. I was thinking, like, hey, in your 20s, you're having fun. They weren't having fun. There was no happiness in that house whatsoever. No. There are certain things you have to give up, and that's privacy here. Where else are you forced to live in smothering close proximity to other people with no privacy? So close that they can hear and witness your every bowel movement. Oh, yeah, prison. <laughs> if the rents ever became normalized, then, then I don't know if a pot share would be necessary because everyone... <clears throat> What's normalized? That's that's why I, you mean come down. It well, if if you were allowed to uh, have developers come in, what was it? San Francisco requires like fifty percent of torn down homes be recycled, like the material. I am sure that if you got regulation out of the way, rents would kind of normalize because builders could come in, build a home. Uh, home, apartment buildings, uh, the rent they generate would more than cover their costs, and then you have an increase of supply in homes, and then rents would go down. But you're not going to do that. It, look, I, I almost could get, are you guys voting leftist? Are you voting for more regulation? Are you? Well, you know, then expect to pay higher prices on everything, by the way, everything.
and just get the wrong private place. Which is never going to happen. Why is rent in mm. San Francisco so high? Onerous regulations on building new there. homes, illegal immigration, and a wealthy Silicon Valley elite that has artificially inflated prices at the expense of the middle class. None of that is going away. I earn about $3,000 per month. I tried living in... 3,000 a month, that's 30, he earns 36,000 a year, did I do that right? 3,000, come on Clary, he used to be a financial genius. Yeah, 36, dude, what the fuck are you doing there? This is the same 10, what the fuck, you know what, go to assholeconsulting.com. I will save your life, literally. Not like your, finan your, your living life, but your financial life. I, and, and so here's why, I, here's where I have no respect, here's why I don't care. This kid, young man, apparently has to be where all the action is. He has to be there. There's something about to say that he has to be there. And he is wasting all of his money. All of it. He's not making progress. He's never going to find a, a, a gallon. If he does, it's going to be a charity case and they're going to be poor together. And they're going to constantly have to white collar panhandle to support themselves and their kids. That's what's going to happen. All right, you make 36000 a year in San Francisco. You're 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 a fool for taking a job and thinking you're gonna live there. But let's see what what you have to say. In San Francisco, on that budget, I was able to do it, but it was really really hard. Right. So you're literally spending nearly half your income on a pod, and then complaining about not making ends meet. Maybe live somewhere other than San Francisco. Oh wait, hang on. I did the math wrong. Three thousand. No, I didn't do the math wrong. Three thousand. That is right. Okay. <coughs> Cisco. I am getting all the value that the city holds. All the value the city holds? The value of contracting bubonic plague? The value of slipping and falling face down onto a mound of putrid shit? The value of accidentally nicking yourself with a used syringe and catching hepatitis C? So trendy. But hey, at least you won't have to hang out with the street junkies when you can blow whatever tiny amount of disposable income you have left on stimulants in the comfort and safety of your own pod. You just share pods. But Paul. All of this sounds a little bit chilling. Surely it wasn't ripped straight from the plot of a nightmarish Black Mirror episode. Surely not again. Sh oh, I don't like Black Mirror. That uh, scares me. I don't like Black Mirror. Yeah, it was. <laughs> they actually made... Time to be alive. Drug and alcohol abuse rampant. Soaring depression rates. All-time suicide highs. All right, I have to. I have to kind of defend the the kids who are in these pods. These kids, millennials, are not your drug users and your drug. If you could afford that and you have the financial uh, couth to know to do that, then you're not the drug addicts or the people shitting in the streets. They might have to deal with that. Every San Franciscan gets to deal with that because culture. Uh, but these kids are, are not the ones who, because if, if you were, they'd be living on the streets. Uh, they wouldn't have the, uh, healthy mind to make such a, a budgeting decision. Uh, so they're not the ones doing the drugs or something. I mean, maybe they are, uh, but not to the level that the street people shitting in the streets. No pets, no family, no disposable income, no savings, no ownership. Sleep in a pod, work in a pod, avocado Dachau. But seriously, someone compared a photo <laughs> from Auschwitz to one of these pod homes and it doesn't even look that different. Wow. The future. That was, that was scary. That is hilarious. Oh. See, I just don't have the energy anymore to get angry at that. It, they, they're punishing themselves. This is called Enjoy the Show. Another example of Enjoy the Show. There's my book, Enjoy the Decline, right? How to Live and Accept with the Death of the United States. But then there's watching the people who think they know better, who are leading the United States into not necessarily collapse, but decay and deterioration. They're not winners. They're not enjoying their lives. And one of the best things you can do is to enjoy the show these people put on for you. These millennials do everything. They're smarter than you. They're more educated than you. That's why they make $36,000 a year and live in San Francisco. But then you look at their standards of living. I mean, how many of them, like, it's not even they lie to themselves. They probably actually believe it. They think, well, I'm saving the environment. My carbon footprint is so small. And I'm here in the culture. They don't see it. They never step back to look with clear eyes or independent third-party eyes to see what, what kind of standards of living and life they're living.
I they enjoy. And he's 100% right. They're a little young now, but he's 100% right. You have nothing in your life, nothing. You have no family, you have no spouse, you have no kids, you have no dogs, you have no hobbies. Remember living in Chicago? You better like running, because that's all you can run. There's no hiking. There's, you can better like the gym too. That's about it. Or maybe some, some martial arts. But uh, unless you're rich and you got a boat, it's, it is such a burden to get out of the city that it, you're not going to have any other hobbies. Uh, and here, San Francisco is the same thing. What hobbies do you have? You know, you, are you foodies? There you can hike. There is enough hills you can hike. Uh, but they, they just, they are. They're living in prison cells, you know, private sector prison cells. Hold for the pod people. Ten years later, still paying off the mortgage for the ownership of their own internal organs. Living the dream. It's called capitalism, Paul. Oh, damn. Owned. You said the C word. That instantly wins the argument. If it's done in the name of capitalism, it must be good, right? Even though the CEO of the company herself literally said it's based on communism. My whole concept was like the idea of the government giving you everything in a communist state. But wait. I thought the entire point of capitalism was to generate prosperity so people could own things. Like homes. No one owns these pods. The pod people are perpetual rent serfs. Right, but she owns the pod. She's the capitalist. This is what I'm still, I'm still bad for. In America, home ownership is at its lowest level in half a century, and that's mostly driven by broke millennials. In the no. UK, home ownership for young adults on a middle income fell no. to 27% in 2016, down from 65% two decades ago. No. Mean house prices were 152% higher in 2015-16 than in 1990. <coughs> you know what? Housing prices are higher. It's the same reason tuition is higher. You millennials vote in this guy called Barack Obama and other respective people in other countries vote in. And the solution to the financial crisis was to print off more money. That was the solution. Now, George Bush also did the TARP bailout. But if you look at the TARP bailout and then you add what Obama did with the federal debt, he doubled it. That was financed by printing off money. He borrowed, but yeah, yeah. The Federal Reserve printed the money and then bought the loans from the Treasury Department. It's very boring uh, government financing. Uh, we, the, in the end, we printed the money. Now the money's gotta go, go somewhere. And if the Federal Reserve prints off the money, trillions of it, by the way, it enters the financial system through the banks. And what do banks do with money? They lend it out. What are your largest items that you lend out money for? Homes and tuition and cars, and sometimes medical expenses and gee, Oh, doobie dabby, have all those gone up by more than the rate of CPI inflation? I, you guys voted it in, you voted it in. You guys thought, well, we'll just get it through the economy of printing off more money. Oh, how come everything's so expensive? 596 after adjusting for inflation. By <sighs> contrast, the real net family incomes of those aged 25 to 34 grew by only 22% <sighs> over those same 20 years. Young it's people, many bad. of whom are laboring under an average of $30,000 in student debt, can't afford to buy homes. They're all rent serfs. Thanks, capitalism. Compare that to communist countries like Cuba and China, where home ownership is around 90%. We don't live under free market. Well, wait, no. <laughs> I wonder about that. Do you really own your home? In capitalism, we live under a system of socialism for the rich. That's, the banks that is got true. bailed out and the bubble was inflated exponentially. Guess who paid for that? You, by a quantitative easing, yeah. money printing, and inflation while your wages stagnated. That's why no one can afford to buy a house. That's why we're forced to rent out pods. We just share pods. That's why home ownership is plummeting. Muammar Gaddafi was eerily prescient in his warnings about the migrant crisis. Maybe we should listen to what he had to say about home ownership. Whoever possesses the house in which you dwell, the vehicle in which you ride, or the income on which you live possesses your freedom. To satisfy these material needs through rent, gives the original owner the right to interfere in your personal life and to control your imperative needs. Even if the original owner be the same <coughs> in general, the original owner can usurp your freedom and take away your happiness. Again, move to Texas where you'll have some state right protection. Move to, well, Wyoming, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, 
New Hampshire, Washington State, just don't go Seattle. I mean, it's all going to come to an end anyway, but he is correct. Michel Welbeck, children existed solely to inherit a man's trade, his moral code and his property. This was taken for granted among the aristocracy, but merchants, craftsmen and peasants also bought into the idea. So it became the norm at every level of society. That's all gone now. I work for someone else. I rent my apartment <laughs> from someone else. There's nothing for my son to inherit. Hey, that's the baby boomers, isn't it? We've been living like this since the 60s. <laughs> yeah, man. If we do not restore the institution of property, we cannot escape restoring the institution of slavery. There is no third course. Home ownership is freedom. Civic investment is freedom. Property is freedom. Yeah, but it costs money there, Joe. And the millennials don't want to work for that. They just want to be giving it to them, see? Communism, like communism, is just given away for free. Oh, Roz, wouldn't it be wonderful if this paperwork just blew away? Obscure movie reference. Family is freedom. Community is freedom. Shelling out half your income to live cheek by jowl with some random people that you'll never even see again. In such close quarters that they can hear whenever you're pooping. In such close quarters that you're prevented from forming any kind of romantic relationship because you inhabit a permanently visible prison-style bunk bed. All because you've been indoctrinated that it's trendy to live in a soul-destroying, alienating, unaffordable, decadent, deteriorating metropolis. That's not freedom. <clears throat> Yo. I, what do you, I, here's, here's my question. You want me to like make fun of millennials? Why do I have to? They're, they're sucking it up. They're sucking at it. They're in enough pain. And the worst thing is, is they are so arrogant and confident of themselves as a generation. There's some millennials that get their heads out of the ass. And there's some good millennials that never fell for this shit in the first place. They're not even going to, they're not going to listen. Not only they're not going to listen. They're, they're like going to yell at you if you dare to point any of this out. Now, I don't know what this has to do with race or sex, but they figure out a way to call you racist and sexist for pointing this out. <clears throat> and then they know better with their social theories on economics and socialism and communism. And, and, and one, you shouldn't be arguing with millennials anyway, because you, you might as well be arguing with this coffee mug. There's no intelligence there. Um... Two, they're the ones punishing themselves. Uh, and three, what was the third one? Oh, why get worked up? Why, as other people, as the non-millennial, should we get... How long have we been telling them to grow up? How long? You think... Now they're at the average millennial's 30 now. You think after three decades of this, they're going to just... Oh, hey, wait a minute. You're right. This is stupid. Uh, let them. Let them have their socialist utopia. Let them. This. My free speech hating Silicon Valley giants who want me disappeared forever. It's absolute summit. Yeah, they just promote it. So there you go. All right, there was my reaction video. I'm sorry it's uh, underwhelming, but I just. I. Living old and long enough in my decrepit age of 44. I, again, this is why I recommend you enjoy the show. Learn to enjoy the show. You don't get your blood pressure up, you don't get angry. You just let people do it to themselves. Strong, independent, single mom, don't need no man. Okay, we'll have your five kids. Good luck with that, hell. I'm majoring in journalism, and I'm going to make it this time, and you don't tell. Okay, fine, have fun majoring in journalism. Um, we need a, tr a public choo-choo light rail train. And Okay, you local Minnesota people, you, you guys pay your taxes. Just let them, let, them have, let, them have, let them have their traffic. Let them have, they, they know better. Like, I get this shit fucking rolling blackouts now in, in California. I, you would never win an argument or make a point with a California leftist, but I'd love to see them argue about a blackout. How do you argue against STEM coming for them, hard math and reality coming for them, saying the economic production has not been here or your economic resources have been so mismanaged that you don't get electricity? And... and, and that causes insanity because they don't know why the electricity out is, but they have to accept it. I'm sure they'll blame George Bush or Trump. I'm sorry, they got the new guy, the new, the new uh, boogeyman to blame is Trump now. All right, links down below. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.